Well, this morning we are honored to have Carl Strand, who is uh, Sugarloaf's general manager here, and he, it's a new position for Carl. And Carl, I want to thank you for being on the program this morning. Thanks How are so you? Much for having yeah. So uh, this morning we we had a, a little challenge with the, uh, a, a transformer blowing up, and uh, I guess it, it's uh, that's what Kip was referring to as well. Uh, it's nothing that happened here in the resort. It was all electrical. That's CMP. Yeah. They're on their way. <laughs> I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> and, and, and you're never supposed to touch a line, ever. No, no, <laughs> never. Um, but that, yeah, that's a challenge, obviously, this morning. And, uh, but it was nothing that we had done. So they're on their way. Hopefully, they'll fix it soon. Right. Um, so Carl, wanted to talk a little bit about um, some of the things that have happened here most recently, of course, um, with the King Pine lift and... Uh, just wanted to know, if, if what kind of a message do you have uh, for people who might be questioning any kind of lift safety here at Sugarloaf Car? Well, I think um, first thing is two incidents in the last five years is unacceptable. Um, I know that the staff here, I've been working with them through the King Pine incident, and uh, they've worked really hard since Spillway to adhere to all the safety standards and codes that are currently out in the industry. But we need to do more. We right. need to be the leaders in that and be actually set the standard for the whole um, ski industry. And that's what we're going to strive to do. We have a, a number of um, uh, engineers and lift mechanics from other resorts and then and some independent people coming. And they're going to help us formulate a plan, which we've already started, and uh, really analyze what we can do and put some strategies together to meet that goal. Mm -hmm. And what can you tell sugar loafers uh, to, and guests to reassure them that riding the lifts here is, are, are, is secure? Well, I think the first message is that um, we ride the lifts too. We're passionate about the lifts here and passionate about safety. Um, my kids ride the lifts. I'm sure you ride the lifts and your friends ride the lifts. So there, there's no one here that's gonna put somebody on a lift where they don't think it's safe. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the message we have to get through. But um, at the same time, how are we gonna communicate that to everybody? Well. I think we're, we've done it so far. We've had a number of press releases that came out talking about specifically about the lifts, but also we're going to go further with that and talk more about what we're going to be doing, how we're going to be proactive with the lifts. When we do have these strategies in place, we'll communicate that either through Facebook or we sent out a letter to all the pass holders recently, just informing them where they are. Really what we want to do is, is have a transparency so everybody understands where we're doing, where we're going, where we've been, where we're going, and where we're going to end up. So I think that's really important. I think the other thing is, you know, having the plan in place, a safety plan that everybody can be proud of, that it does lead the industry. And we're going to work on that and communicate that as well as we go forward. And then the other thing we're looking at is just a, a really safety education as well. We're mm -hmm. going to commit more time and effort to our lift mechanics to bring them up to what the latest things are. And also we want to do that across the board with our employees and actually even the public, mm -hmm. you know, how to ride a, a lift safer. So we're all aware of it. We're all thinking about it at the same time. Mm -hmm. So we, I know that uh, we're talking about some of the things that uh, we can expect in the coming months uh, regarding safety and upgrades. And uh, you've kind of outlined that. Now, the, uh, in talking about Timberline, Timberline, can you give us an update on, on what's going on with that lift right now? Sure. Oh, well. Part of our ongoing investigation in King Pine, we found that there's basically were two things that happened. One was a gearbox failure, shaft failure, and the other one was there was a flaw in the braking system. Now the gear shaft failure, that's happened before at other resorts, but uh, rollbacks are very uncommon, actually rare. And what happened was that the gearbox failed, it was a coupling, and then what happened is it, it allowed the bull wheel, which is that wheel where the rope goes around, the chair goes around, to kind of free spin. And, and normally the, the, the redundancy for that type, so it doesn't go backwards, there's two, there's two methods. There's a, what they call a drop dog, which is actually a piece of metal that drops down into the bull wheel and gets hooked on a, a, a tooth or so. Mm -hmm. And that would stop the bull wheel from going backwards. Well, that didn't engage for some reason. We're still trying to figure out what that is. And then the other, the other thing is the braking system or the emergency brake where there's two triggers for that. There's an automatic one where the arm goes around. As soon as it shows that it's going backwards, it will trigger that. And then there's a manual too, and both of those were engaged. But that braking system is designed to slow the lift down. Mm -hmm. It's not designed to stop it abruptly because we don't want people falling out of the chair. So right. if you, I'm sure everybody saw that video that was on the internet. Yeah. But you can see that it was starting up and it was slowly going down. Right. So that braking system actually did work. It did engage. But it's really designed to, 
to slow it down. Mm -hmm. the, the failure was the drop dog. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is we've put a, one of our proactive stuff, we put some new redundancy switches in, into all the drop dogs on the mountain and uh, that affected by those Borvik lifts. And so now there's another redundancy so that drop dog will, will activate. Mm -hmm. So we have that and then as the season ends, we're gonna go back and we're gonna look at all the lifts. We have a team that's coming um, uh, they're going to spend two to three days on every lift and then analyze that and then that will help us with our plan too. But put redundancies in and, and bring us up to not only current standards but surpassing it as well. Right. Uh, would, would, I, certainly there's been lots of conversation, I'm sure, uh, in, in the office uh, and with Boeing. Um, it, has there been talk of any new lifts? We, that's part of the plan. I mean, um, King Pine is not reopening this year, obviously. Okay. And we're looking at all the lifts and seeing where we where not only maybe perhaps doing new lifts, but also uh, enhancing the ones that we already have and upgrading them. Right. And so, that, we'll know more and more of that probably after these seasons so we can really analyze that. But right yeah. now we're formatting all that. And what, as we get further along in our plan, we'll communicate that. Right. So I, the transparency is great and, and people want to certainly know because... Uh, uh, there's a lot of people that have been seeing here a long time, and I, I think it breaks their heart to see something like that happen as well. And I'm sure that they would uh, uh, love to be able to uh, uh, to talk about Sugarloaf and how safe it is, because for the most part, you know, I, I've never been on a lifted stop. But right. It, but it's uh, certainly something that you, people want to know about. Right. I think part of it, too, uh, there's a lot of stops in a lift. And some of them are just normal. It's somebody loading on or loading off, and they have to stop the lift. There's also a lot of communication on lifts that if a little piece of ice gets in the way of the electronics, that stops the lift. So we're going to educate that, too, what these different stops are. Mm -hmm. So not everything is a mechanical issue. Right. And, and then, you know, communicate that so people understand what's going on. And just you know, like transparency, but just an educational thing so right. everybody is on the same page. Will we see Timberline open up? Well, right now, Timberline... Um, Timberline was very similar to King Pine, actually has the same components. So uh, one of the challenges at King Pine was there's two industry standards how to check gearboxes. One is you take an oil sample and you see if there's any residue or bits of metal and that would alert you that there's something to sure. do. Uh, and then the other one is a vibration test. You, you just you have a baseline of where the vibrate, how, how much the gearbox vibrates and then you test it again and you see if there's any difference. King Pine had both those tests and didn't show any, any problems there. So the, the only real way to do it is actually a visual inspection. You have to open up the gearbox, drain the oil, and look at it. Um, so we decided that because Timberline was so close to King Pine that we'd go and do a visual inspection. And when we did, we did find some abnormal wear on that. So we decided to take it out of service, and we're now we're, we're trying to source a new gear shaft to put in. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've had... Some luck trying to find one, or hopefully we can get it up and going by the end of the season. So it sounds to me like there is a silver lining here, the fact that you were proactive enough with Timberline to find that there may be a problem in the future. Correct. We just, you, we're, we're, we're already starting the process of this plan to make the lift safer. Mm -hmm. Carl, really appreciate you coming on the program this morning. We, uh, I know that you're a busy guy, and uh, your new position here is, uh, is offering up a, a number of challenges for you, but I'm sure you're ready to, to rally to the occasion. No, it's all great. <laughs> I did want, <laughs> Thank I you. Do want to say that uh, I'm really proud of the staff here. Yeah. You know, they, how they handled the King Pine incident and rolled it right into the Nationals, how the staff, um, all, all the departments got everybody evacuated the lift, got them down, get injured people down, and the communications too. Yeah. Uh, Ethan, Al Ethan Austin and his team did a wonderful job. So d in that same uh, topic, um, the, the lift department uh, did what they were supposed to do in a situation like that? Actually, um, it was interesting because we had a, a, a number of people from Boeing come out and they looked at um, how we do things here and they thought they might find a smoking gun. But actually, our lift department does things are more the more safety checks and more more safety um, procedures than other Boeing properties. So mm -hmm. they were impressed with our staff here. Well, that's fantastic, and uh, we appreciate it once again for you taking the time to come on here. And congratulations on your new position. Thank you so All much. All right, thank you. Thank, you, Carl. thank you, Carl Strand, General Manager of Sugarloaf, and. Uh,